Today we're going to go over how to create a new Heroku app, add a database resource, in this case ClearDB, and then we're going to um, connect to that database from a Node.js application. So to get started, you could have, head over to Heroku, create a new account if you don't have one, and then go to create a new app. And I'll just call this test db app. If that's available, it's not available, so I'll do one, two. And then you can go ahead and create app. And you can name yours whatever you want. Um, if you're using this for an actual project, you could use that name. Um, so for we can go over to the resources tab, and then if you click on add-ons here, we can search for Clear DB MySQL. So it's going to add a MySQL database to your Heroku app for free. And you could do submit order form. And we're just going to use the free plan. If you need more than, I believe it's five megabytes of storage in the database, you could upgrade to the next plan, which is, as I think it's around $10 per month. So then you can go over to settings and that will automatically add a environmental variable here with the database connection string. So we can copy this and then we can go over to our terminal and we're going to create a new app. So you can go to your workspace, wherever you have your code, you can do a make dir to make a new directory and we can call this test app. And then if you have VS code installed, you could open it with test or code space test hyphen app. And if you don't have this code command, you can just open VS code and then add this folder to the project. So we have this, so we could close our other terminal and we could use the integrated terminal with a control back tick. And we could run npm init hyphen y. Hyphen y will just make it do all the default settings. And this will create a new um, package.json for us here. So we could remove this test script. Let's add one called start. And then we'll say node app.js. And for author, you got your name. Keywords, we'll leave blank for now. Description, we'll leave blank. And then we'll make the main app.js as well. And then we'll add a new file. We'll call it app.js. And actually, let's create a new folder here, code. And this will just um, give us a little bit more um, cleanliness in, in our app structure. So this way, in, in the root, we could have meta files such as like a readme, maybe it's a test app. So then in your terminal, you want to cd into the code folder. And we have the package JSON. We could then do npm i hyphen hyphen save pro hair thesis, <clears throat> which is a wrapper for MySQL for a node. So this will let you make a database calls directly from your uh, node application here. So then in the app.js file, we could then say const pro hair thesis equals require paresis and I believe this is actually a normal export. Yeah, so then we could say const database equals new paresis and this takes in a database connection string. So we can copy this string here and let's create a new .env file and we'll say clear db, let's see what the key is here. So clear db database URL and set that equal to that connection string. This will make it so when we're developing locally, it will act the same as if you're on the server because the Heroku server has this environmental variable here. So one other thing we want to do is we can add a new git ignore file. And you can put this in the code folder if you want. Then we can say .env and then we'll say node modules. So this way those aren't uploaded to our git repo and then the .env ENV will also not be uploaded to Heroku when we deploy. So now that we have that, we can create a new file, env.js. And you don't have to do it this way. I, I usually do it this way. I import all the environmental variables in a new JavaScript file, so, and I export an object. I, j I found it makes it a little bit cleaner than having to use um, the .env package in multiple files. So we could do npm install, type knife and save .env. And then in the env.js, let's do a require.env.config. What this does is it's going to load all the values, if there are any, from the .env file. And it's going to 
insert them into the process.env object. So now we can say process.env.clearDB database URL, and this will exist because it's in the same directory as the .env file here. So we're going to export an object here, and we'll say call it clearDB database URL and set that equal to the value from the process. So now in our app, we can import the env um, and require that from env file there. And then we could just do a log. So I'll comment out the database for now, env. And then we, if we run this, we could say node app.js. And it looks like it's empty. So let's see what's going on there. Oh, module that exports. There we go. Sorry about that. So if you run it, you'll see that we now have the connection string here. It's uh, successfully loading from the .env file. So now we could pass that into the prohoresis function here. And that's going to connect our database to the Heroku uh, MySQL database server. So now what we could do is we can create set, set up some tables. If you have a database manager like SQL Pro I have down here, you can use that and enter the database credentials and manage the tables. And it gives you a nice um, graphical user interface to manage the database. But for now, since we're just going to do a simple tutorial on this, we'll just create a simple table. So I'll say create table user, and we'll say ID. Um, it'll just say username. I'll make that a varchar of 20 characters, and we'll make that a primary key. And we'll say password our card. Let's give it 300 in case we hash it. Not null. We'll say not null here too. And date added. You can give us a date time for the date that the user was created. And the query function returns a promise. So we say dot then. And we'll log that response here. And if there's an error, we can log an error. So it fixes indenting here. And now if we run this, looks like there's an error. So let's see what we're getting here. Primary key. Okay, so uh, primary key, I think it's different. It might be in a different, uh, it might be Microsoft I was thinking of. So if you do primary space key for the username, it'll make the username unique and the primary key for the table. So you can see um, that we got no error here, so we printed out the response. So now what we could do is we could change this to a select statement and say select all from user. If you run that, see there's no nothing in the table right now, which is what we would expect because we just created it. And let's add one finally block. So whether it succeeds or fails, we're going to, going to close the database connection at the end. So this way, after the response is returned, we could see here it's, it's still keeping the process open. So we want to close that. So we could say uh, database.close and make sure you add that period. So if we run the same thing again, it will return an empty array and then close the process. All right, so what we can do now is we can insert a user into the table. Into user, say username, password, they added values, we'll say Jake, and then password, I'll say SHA2, so this will um, hash the Password, so I'll say password and 256 bit. And then for the date added, it's a date time, so we'll say now, so the current time. And if we run this, succeeded. Oops, I save it. So if you run that, you'll see affected rows one, so you can see it inserted one row. So now if we change back to select all from user. You'll see that you get the that row back and if you had other users in the same table you would get those back as well 
All right, so now that we have this working, let's do a simple express app and use the database to um, return data to the user. So to do that, let's do npm i hyphen hyphen save express. And let's actually do npm i hyphen hyphen save um, body parser. And we could add uh, Morgan here as well for logging. So normally we can create route files, but for now, let's just keep it all in here just to keep it simple. So we'll import express. And let's duplicate this and we'll create one for body parser. And then uh, let's do Morgan import. All right, so now we can create the app. So we'll say, app equals express. So we'll create a new express application instance. And then we'll say app.use, and we'll use Morgan for dev logging. And then um, I always forget the commands for body parser. So let's look those up quick. So we wanna parse any JSON that's coming through. So you could copy these two. So it'll parse all forms and also uh, any JSON bodies that come through. So paste it in funny so you remove these. And then we should be all set up with our middleware. And then let's add a route for dot post. So this will be if you're adding a user. So we'll say slash API slash user, make this an async function, direct response. And then here, what we're going to want to do is the body will contain, let's say, a username and password. And we want to insert this user into the database if, if they don't exist already. Um, so we could do a check first and then return an error, or we can just do a try catch. And since the username is a primary key, we should receive an error if we try to insert that username again. Um, so here in the try, let's just do um, await database.query insert into user username password date added and for the values we're going to do something different here we're going to use a prepared statement which is more secure and it will prevent against SQL injection so for any values you get from the UI or from the user you want to always use a prepared statement um, just to make sure that they're, they can't access any data that you don't want them to access. So we're going to have to, since for any prepared statement value, you just use an at sign in front of it. And then in the you pass an object as a second parameter into the query function. And then you, for each of those values, you provide the same key. And then you provide whatever value you want. So in this case, it'll be the same username, password, password. And we could use the shortcut to remove the value since it's the same key and value. So this should now work. And then on a catch, we could say console.error, error, adding user, response.status, we'd say there's a server error, and then response.end, error, adding user, does this user exist already? And you could do a more thorough handling of the user here, um, but for now, we could do it that way. And something we could have added to the data database table would be a token if you want to do that. And when they log in, you could create a new token and, and return that down here. And that would let them use a to token-based authentication for making sure um, the user is logged in. Um, but in this case, to keep it simple, we'll just say response status 200, so it's, everything's okay. And we'll say added user. So that's it for now. And so this, is, this would be for um, creating a new user. And then we could do a route for put. So say the user is logging in. Um, we could do a check, say like const user. We'll say select all from user. Username equals at username. And password equals SHA2 at password 256. 
This will check our table to see if there is a user with the same username and password. And if we get a response back, we'll know that it is a valid user and we could return it. Okay. So we'll pass the username and password again. We should get that from the body. And then we'll say user exists. And of course, if this is a real application, you would um, either ha have a session or a cookie to keep the user logged in, or you could use a token and you could store that token in the database table and return that here. Um, and then whenever the user sent makes a request to the back end, you would send that token to from the UI to the back end to verify the user again. Uh, so let's say user exists, and we'll say error retrieving user. Does user exist? So it's pretty similar to the, the login flow or the register flow. So this would be for logging in. And we could do one more for getting the user. So if you go to get and this would be more so if you have a token. Um, so here you could do basically whatever you want. Um, Cause if you're an admin, maybe we could return all users. Uh, so select off user And we can just say username because we want to return the password. So we'll say username date added. And this is probably not something you normally do, but in this for this example, we could do this. Um, users. So we're going to get a, a list of all users. And then we'll do response status 200 and then return the JSON from the database users. This will return an array of user objects with um, a key username and a key date added. error finding users, and we'll just update these error messages. And that's pretty much it for just accessing a database from um, from Node.js here using the pro Resys package. And you could, some, I guess some optimizations you could do is move these out into like um, specific routes, route files, and so it's all um, kind of bundled up for the, each purpose. And then you could deploy this to Heroku by doing Heroku um, deploy. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions on actually using this, connecting to the database or deploying to Heroku, feel free to leave a comment. And in the future, I'll make a, a new video on actually deploying this to Heroku. So if you liked the video, feel free to like it and uh, subscribe to not miss out on future videos. Thank you.